The next bone of the shoulder is clavicle. And the clavicle, together with the, with the scapula, they create so-called girdle, bony framework of the shoulder. So they basically, they keep away the upper limb from the trunk. And let's start with the topography of the, of the clavicle. The clavicle connects laterally to the scapula and, and this lateral end called acromial end because it connects to the acromial process of the scapula. The medial end of the, of the clavicle is called sternal end because it's connected to the, to the chest bone or the sternum. And similarly uh, to the scapula, I did the same with the, with the collarbone. I made it more simplified and easy to understand because the form of the, of the clavicle is fairly complicated. So I made it more easy for you to understand. So the joint between the sternum and the clavicle is called the sternoclavicular joint. That's the only real joint where the upper limb is connected to the trunk. As we know, the scapula is free-floating bone. It's not connected with any joint to the, with the trunk. The only joint, only strict joint, is the joint with the, with the clavicle. The acromial end of the clavicle is connected to the acromion process, and this joint called the scapuloclavicular joint. Scapula clavicular joint basically, as you see, kind of comes under the acromion process. So, so the scapula kind of wraps in the clavicle, and the clavicle doesn't reach the end of the shoulder. So the acromion joint kind of the closes the whole structure and makes it more strong. And now uh, let's talk about morphology and physiology of the clavicle. I made a simplified model of the clavicle. Basically, I broke into the geometrical primitives for you to be easy to understand. The acromial end and the shaft of the clavicle is flat, but the sternal end is cylindric and more round. An acromial end of the clavicle is flat because it, it has this connection to the acromial process. So flat end of the clavicle connects to the flat acromial process. And if you look from above, you can see uh, the both clavicles and with the manubrium, which is the upper part of the sternum, they create uh, the shape somewhat like a bow. It has the name, the Cupid's bow. But if you look at the clavicle from the front, you can see the clavicle is straight. It doesn't have this S shape. And together, usually they create the straight line. So here you can see in this model on the right side, the both clavicles, they create almost perfect straight line and the pit of the neck the kind of it, it kind of breaks this shape and then the, the lateral ends is here. But if you look at the second model you can see the clavicle they create V shape. And this lateral end of the clavicle kind of like a sticks out this acromial end. So it means the acromion process is, is very low but still they maintain the joint. But in the picture on the right side, the acromion process is pretty much on a similar level. So the, this acromial end of the clavicle doesn't make any specific bump on top of the shoulder. So in this picture, you can see how clavicle and acromion process accommodate. So the acromion process comes from the back and it grabs on the clavicle and from one side there is deltoid, deltoid muscle, and from the other side there is a trapezius muscle. And if you look further, you can see pectoralis major muscle and uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle. So basically the whole clavicle is covered with the muscles from the both sides, and there is not much poor bone to be visible. But you can see here in the middle there is a little notch, so it's almost like a bridge over the valley. So that's the place where there is no muscles, no deltoid muscle, no pectoralis muscle. So it's something like a free place where you can always see the clavicle. And this, uh, this notch called delto-pectoral triangle. And why it is delto-pectoral triangle? Because it is in between the, the pectoralis muscle and the deltoid muscle. So basically there is a, a gap under the clavicle, almost like under the bridge, where the 
important nerves called uh, brachial plexus is passing through down to the to the upper limb and sometimes you can see clavicle all the way and it's quite quite visible and sometimes the clavicle is hidden and why it is so and it's usually because of the thickness of the muscles because if the muscles are very thin you can see they barely cover the clavicle and you can still read the shape of the clavicle like in in, in the first image you can see this acromial end you can see the sternal end basically you can see all the way uh, the whole clavicle all the way to but in the next case you see only the middle part of the clavicle that's the this basically this this part which i already mentioned between the muscles between the deltoid and the pectoral muscle and also trapezius muscle but in a in a very right image you can see that uh, only place where we can see the clavicle is this delta pectoral triangle and that's it and the rest is covered with the muscles basically the thickness of the muscle covers up the bone if we're talking about the distal end or this um, acromial end of the clavicle it is visible only when arm is at the rest so when you start lifting up your arm the distal end of the clavicle or the acromial end of the clavicle disappears because the whole joint scapuloclavicular joint turns to the backside and it's visible only from the backside and we'll talk about this when we will be covering the deltoid muscle